Great day everyone, welcome to another OBS tutorial on this channel and in today's video I would like to show you best recording settings for your 1080p 60fps videos. So let's go for it. Okay, so as OBS is already launched, we can go straight towards the settings. Here basically we can skip the general because there is nothing what could actually impact our output of our video recording in the OBS. And we can also skip of course the stream because we are talking in this video about the best recording settings, not best streaming settings. So we are going straight towards the output and here all the show begins. So first of all, make sure that your output mode is set to advanced instead of the simple. So we'll click on this advanced and then we are going towards this recording folder. So instead of the streaming, we are going to talk about the recording. So click on this here, make sure that your type is set to standard and then we are going straight towards the recording setting. So first of all, you have to choose the record path. This is where your recorded videos will be actually saved. So in my case, it's in the folder and in the videos. Next, we are going towards the recording format. The default is Matroska video, but I prefer to go with the MP4. So I will choose this one. Next, we are going to choose the video encoder. Here, basically, you are choosing the best encoder depending on your hardware. The default video encoder is X264. What you are also using in case you have stronger CPU than your GPU. But in case you have NVIDIA GPU card and it's stronger than your CPU, then I would prefer to go with NVIDIA NVENC H264, as it's a better option with better quality than X264. But as not everybody has the NVIDIA GPU, the default is X264. So in the end, you will choose one of those two options, X264 or NVIDIA NVENC H264. In my case, as I have NVIDIA graphic card and it's stronger than my CPU, I'm going with NVIDIA NVENC H264. Audio encoder we can keep with FFmpeg AAC and then we are going to choose the audio track. Here it could be quite a longer topic, but in default you can keep it at one and it will record everything what you have set for your audio track one, what in default will of course be your desktop audio and your microphone. So in my case and for purpose of this video, we will keep it at one. Rescale output we will keep unchecked because we want to keep the resolution of 1920 to 1080. Custom mixer settings and automatic file splitting I will keep blank and unchecked as well. So those were the recording settings and now we are going towards the encoder settings. Here basically if you remember correctly in the best streaming settings for 1080p 60fps we were using a rate control CBR. What is constant bitrate rate? That means that the OBS will send towards the server always the constant rate of bitrate which we set down here. What was basically in the case of a Twitch or Kick or whatever else around 6 or 8000. The bitrate you should use to record at OBS for high quality will depend on factors such as your internet connection, hardware capabilities and desired output quality. Generally, a bitrate between 10 to 20,000 kilobit per second is recommended for high quality recordings. So as you would set here 20,000 for your bitrate at the CBR, your final picture quality would be great, but also the size of your file would be extreme because you would be using constantly 20,000 bitrate even though nothing would be happening on your picture. Therefore, those 20,000 bitrate is basically not needed to be used constantly and therefore for the encoder settings at the recordings, I would advise instead of the CBR to go with the CQP, what stands for constant quantization parameter, which is moving between level 0 and 30. 0 is the best possible quality, but with the big sizes and big impact on your hardware and the 30 is the worst quality that you can get. Level around the 22 is generally acceptable. Level 16 is very good and visually lossless. In case you cannot see here CQP, the CRF is the option as well. You may be asking why to use CQP or CRF for recording instead of the CBR. Basically CQP and CRF will change the bitrate dynamically depending on what is happening on the screen. CBR wastes bitrate when no movement is happening and might pixel it if a lot is happening. So set the value between 15 and 26 lower values is better quality but takes up increasingly more disk space. You have to find a balance that works for you by yourself. Okay, so in my case, as I test it out, I'm going with the CQ level of T16. What is good enough quality for me? Next, we are moving towards the keyframe interval. This determines how often the whole picture is transmitted. You want to set it to values from 2 to 4, so I'm going with the 2. Next, we are going towards the preset. 
Here it quite much depends on your setup. If your setup is strong you can go for quality or even high quality. If your setup is not so good move your choice more towards performance. Preset is intended to indicate how fast the encoder should run. Faster presets will use less CPU at the cost of quality computations. Slower presets will use more computation for quality but will use much more CPU. So in the end it's up to you and you have to check this out and test it out which works perfectly for you where your videos has the best possible quality while your video or your game or whatever else is actually not impacted much by your choice. In my case I'm going with P4 medium quality. But of course in case you have stronger hardware and you want to reach the best possible record settings you want to go with the slower ones. Okay tuning we are keeping it on high quality. Multipulse mode, here basically you want to go with two passes if hardware allows it to you, as multipulse mode is used to determine whether a second pass is used in encoding and has three settings, disabled, quad resolution and full resolution. Enabling this will give higher quality at the cost of more GPU resource usage. So in your case, as you want to get the best possible quality for your video, you want to go with two passes, full resolution. Next we got the profile which you should set for high, most people should use high which will allow you to use full hardware acceleration for better encoding. If you notice your system is lagging and you are dropping frames, kick it down towards the main, which is less taxing on your PC but won't give you an image as sharp as high. Look ahead we want to keep it unchecked as look ahead function is adaptively changing the B frames. In case you are recording dynamic content then it's better to disable look ahead and specify two B frames. So here in the max B frames you will specify it towards the two. Psychovisual tuning, it allows the encoder to sacrifice some parts of an image to enhance other parts to make the overall perceived visual quality better to the human eye. So in my case as I want to reach the best possible video quality, I'm going with checked psychovisual tuning. Ok and GPU, you can leave the GPU at the zero if you have only one graphics card. In case you have two graphics cards, in this case you want to put that one because this is usually the better graphics card. But in my case as I have the single one graphics card, I'm going with the zero. Ok so that's all for the recording settings, now of course don't forget to go towards the audio and here you want to make sure that your audio bitrate is set to 320 in case you are of course recording in the 1080p 60fps videos. So I will choose 320 and now we are moving towards the audio. Here at the sample rate for the most applications the 44.1 kHz is sufficient, however if your audio equipment supports it and you want the best possible audio quality for your video you can set this to 48 kHz. Channels we will keep on stereo, in the global audio devices of course I will choose towards the desktop audio my headphones, then I will set my microphone which is in my case microphone 2C1U. So I will set it up. In the global audio devices there is nothing else what needs to be set. I can keep decay rate at fast, peak matter type sample peak and everything else can stay as it was in the default. So I will click on apply and we are going towards the video. Here the base canvas resolution is basically the resolution of your monitor or it's best to match the resolution of your monitor. But default settings is 1080p what is 1920 to 1080. The output scaled resolution is what will be in the end recorded by the OBS. What will be in the end the resolution of your recorded video. Here you can set whether you want to record in 720p, 1080p or anything else. But as in this video we are talking about the best possible settings for your 1080p 60fps video, we are going of course with 1920 to 1080. The downscale filter we are not choosing any because we kept the output scaled resolution same as the base canvas. So we don't have to choose here anything and with the common FPS values we are going with the 60 and I will click on apply. Hotkeys and accessibility can be basically skipped and we are going straight towards the advanced. Here make sure that you will set the process priority towards the high. If you have many processes opened in the background you can set the priority to above normal or high but watch out for too many high priority processes opened at the same time. So in my case as I want to get the best possible quality for my video I'm going with high, I will click on apply and we are done. Ok ladies and gentlemen that's all for this video, really hope you found it what you were looking for. Hope you are good and video fine, thanks for watching and all of the support and see you all next time.